All right, there are initial values, and now I'm going to form the main table, starting with time. I'll make some space here because I'll probably be adding some parameters. And then the x and y values. Let me put the x velocity along side x and then vy. Again, these should be all in italics, subscripts. Okay, there are my headings for the table. The first time we'll start with t equals zero. I could put t zero as a parameter as well. We'll just start with zero. The second time, the next step will be some value slightly greater than this. So I need a delta time, a delta t. So let me go back up to my parameter area and add that. Now I happen to know that delta is the Greek character for the letter D. And if I use an uppercase D, I get the delta that I want. So I type DT, uppercase D, select the D, format cell, again, find symbol font. I'll make that italics, and I'll make the T italics as well. And we'll put 0.01 seconds for our initial value. One of the powerful things of a spreadsheet is that if I don't like these values later, I can change them. And wherever they are used in the spreadsheet, that will be automatically updated. Okay, so this, the next value of time is going to be a formula um, based on the previous value. In Excel, formulas begin with an equal sign. So far, we've just entered text into cells and some numerical values. Now I'm going to enter a formula. Click my formula bar, type equals. Now I want it to be equal to this value, the cell above it, which in my case here is cell A14. So I could type A14 into that position, or I can simply just click on the cell A14. When I click on that, Excel automatically enters the cell reference. And then I want to add to that the value of delta t, which is this cell. So I'll just bring the mouse over there, click, and you can see that, that is b7. And when I clicked, I got b7 entered there. Press the Enter key. For the next time, I want it to be following the same pattern. So I want it to be one above it plus delta t. Rather than retype that, I can use the autofill feature of Excel. So I select the cell I want to clone or copy. And on the lower right corner of this, you see a small square. And you see my cursor turns to a small plus sign. Once I've got that, I click and hold and drag down. You see a problem will arise. Here's the value, here's the, the, the cell formula we've typed in earlier. If I look at the one directly below it, the first one we autofilled, we see that it, it automatically went from A14 to A15, which is what we wanted it to do. But it did not uh, reference the cell that holds the value for DT. It references the one below it. So that's a problem. Somehow we need to fix this. This has to be B7, not, B, not uh, changing as we clone it down. So I'm going to undo what I've just done in my last step. And I do that with the menu command, uh, edit, undo. Or I can just simply hold the command key or the control key on a PC and press the letter Z. Now let's fix this formula. We want to keep 7 when we clone this formula down. So the way we anchor that the way we, we lock it is we uh, prefix it with a special character. In this case, it's the dollar sign. Then press the Enter key. 
Now when I drag that downward, you see the numbers are incrementing nicely. If I look at the very first cell that autofilled, we see it's still B7. Look down at the bottom here. It's still referencing the cell directly above. In this case, cell A23 is referencing the cell A22, but it's adding to that the time increment that's in value in, in the cell value B7. Okay. Now in this table we want this to have a lot of values, so I'm going to actually drag this down quite some distance, several hundred rows, and then stop. And now I have a very long spreadsheet. I can use this scroll slider here to go back and forth between the top and the bottom. However, Excel has a feature that allows me to split the screen into an upper and lower region with separate scrolling capability. Now watch as I move the cursor over to the right side. It changes. Now I'll click and hold, drag downward to where I want it, and you see now there's a bar across the middle of the screen, but most importantly you'll see I have two separate scrolling regions here. I can scroll the top separately from the bottom. And if I scroll this down to the bottom, I can now see the upper part of the spreadsheet and the end of the spreadsheet all at the same time. 